you might have come across a situation where you came out of the examination hall and uh, you verified the question paper at last and then you see that. Instead of you realize that uh, you have written 18 to 7 as 54 instead of 56. And then uh, you, you might have mistook uh, two zeros for 8 or you know, 4 into 2 is 6 instead of 8 and 10 into 10 is uh, 20 instead of 100. All these are common errors that we naturally do that. Okay. So this video explains to you how you can get rid of this mistake or how you can minimize this type of uh, silly mistakes or you call this. Please do watch the video till the end. Shoot out to me any questions if you come across. Thanks so much in advance. The main thing or the first point you have to note here is that practice, practice and practice. That means you should have fun. Before you enter the examination hall, there should be a considerable practice that you have to do. You think uh, you have, uh, you know the, this problem very well. So it doesn't mean that you should know that uh, while you write the examination. No examiner will approach you and ask you what, uh, what are the different strategies that you have adopted to learn maths. For how many hours did you spend studying maths before the exam? Nobody will ask you, but instead, if you do not know how to write it at that particular time, if, it, if the uh, solution has not come to your mind at that particular time, then it's not. Then you are lost, you can say that you are lost. There's something that you need to prepare well in advance. There, there's a particular, there's a considerable approach. There's a considerable approach on how to prepare well in advance so that you could uh, overcome this type of problem. So maths is also a subject unlike other subjects, but there is something that uh, you need to understand in maths that it is the only sub it's one of the subjects that requires more concentration. You cannot uh, do more than one thing at the same time, so while talking to your friend you are working on the problem, more likely you are taught to make the mistakes. Uh, to st in order to stimulate the flow of information, studying with the help of a soft music can help you uh, a lot. Cool and relaxing music can help you increase your concentration and uh, due to this, uh, you, your concentration will be increased and you will be able to solve more of the problems. When I say it is soft music, I do mean that it is a soft music. You cannot, uh, uh, you cannot keep a loud music with large number of beats or rap sounds or something like that. You cannot do that. Because as I told you a minute earlier that uh, our mind cannot concentrate on more uh, things at the same time. So I've also seen that many people are in their, uh, uh, they use their earphones and they create a rap music and they'll dance along with the music and do these problems where it leads to nowhere. We cannot, uh, uh, they are most vulnerable to make mistakes and we cannot expect a positive. Uh, so if you are not ready to sacrifice your comfort zone to achieve something, then maths is a bit harder for you. You are going to make the things worse than uh, how I easily you could tackle it. Concentration is a must. So the next uh, thing that you remember is to master the key concepts. That does not mean that you have to memorize each and everything that you have learned. I have seen some of the students as by hearting the theorems and uh, yeah, in an eagerness to score well in the examination, but remember we can, we can agree to some extent that by having the formulas might help you uh, in the examination, but I don't really understand uh, how it helps you when you buy at some of the theorems. Remember that it spoils your analytical skills. Ma you know that maths is a sequential subject. Once a particular step in a, a problem solving leads to the next step, and being it a sequential subject, your approach to, to study maths should be in such a way that uh, the sequence, uh, you should be able to uh, figure out which sequence it has to be gone. If you are asked to recite a nursery rhyme, you might do it properly, but when you are asked to recite a poem that you have studied in 7th grade, or that the last year uh, you have studied, you are memorized, and you are asked to recite that, it might be difficult for you. What's the reason? Have you ever thought what's the reason behind this? So when you study the poem, you just study it for the sake of study. But in the earlier case, no teacher was asked you to memorize uh, the nursery line. You did it by repetition. So the same technique would be used here. Because in, uh, when, yeah, when you are in the kindergarten, the teacher comes and asks you to sing the, uh, along with the teacher. So you will sing, the next day you will repeat, the next day you will repeat. The repetition process will go on like that. But it was not the case when you studied in your 7th grade or 8th grade or something like that. There, the problem is you have not... Uh, 
re-stated that memory, what we have learned, you have not once again uh, yet, tried to enhance that particular memory so that the a good percentage of what you have studied is tend to forget at that time. So that happens. So it shouldn't be that when you study the formulas in maths, make it a point that you give constant revision to the formula. There's a trick, a uh, technique that you could do here is that you could write all the formulas in a piece of paper and you could stick it on to the, paper, uh, to the wall where you can see it regularly. And you needn't uh, study from there, you needn't uh, carefully look or observe the wall and uh, attempt to learn it by heart. You just uh, have a glance at it so that it, uh, this particular paper should be in a place where you can uh, see it regularly so that whenever you see that uh, without your knowledge that will, um, that, uh, will reach out your brain. So this is one of the way where you can enhance your uh, memory skills with, uh, with constant revision and this is how the by hearting process can help you here. But it's not the case when you study a theorem or a lengthier problem like that. So do not attempt to by heart. You may succeed or you may not succeed but one thing for sure is you will spoil your analytical skill. Okay, so uh, you should have a notebook and a pen along with you and you should have the practice of writing and learning. Maths is such a subject because when you do that, uh, you will have more concentration or when, whenever you commit any mistake, you will come to know what the mistake is at the first glance. There is no question that you do not know. I am not uh, discussing here about the, what you do in the examination hall, but I am telling you what prior you can do it, how you can prepare well. You should learn ample amount of problem sol solving techniques before you enter the examination hall. And to do this, you need to practice. You have to practice more and more problems. Though you know the problems, you have to do it once again so that your speed and your skills could be analyzed. Uh, your skills could be enhanced. Your problem solving skills and uh, you should be able to do it faster. And that's how you need to do. Don't ever think that because you just because you know how to uh, do a problem, it doesn't mean that you could do it always. You should have the practice of writing all the time. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.